Okay, start this off by saying I am not the first person to do this at all. There are dedicated boards out there for if you want to really, for whatever reason, you want to use Brainfuck on your Arduino, you could just get a dedicated board for it. So yeah, um, I made a Brainfuck interpreter with my Arduino. Uh, it's great. It's practical. It took way too much time considering uh, the actual stuff that it does, but uh, you can just ignore that. I don't have a way to put data onto the Arduino either, because so, like SD card readers, stuff like that, like it's, I, I don't have any of those. You know what I do have though is a serial port. So for my in interpreter, all you need is just the board and a computer. It's great. But before I show you how it all works and stuff like that, let me show you the design process I had to go through in order to get this to work. Just in case you're not familiar with BrainFuck, uh, BrainFuck is a esoteric programming language. It is designed to be as unusable as possible, but also being fully featured. So imagine if you had an array and you turn that into a programming language. Like you can maybe start to see how that would, might work. There, You have a cursor, you can move it around, change the values of the array, it's great. There's only like eight symbols you need to know too. So it makes it really simple to make an interpreter for it. Um, that is unless you're trying to do it for an Arduino. So first things first, we have the plus and minus symbols, which increase and decrease the, the number in the array and stuff like that. Straightforward code, just plus, plus, minus, minus, you get the you get the gist. And it's even better since you might start thinking, oh, well, what if you start overflowing? Well, on the Arduino and other low hardware stuff like that, you don't have to worry about that. It will just overflow and it'll wrap around. And that's exactly how BrainFuck is, is, is supposed to be used. I don't even need to do any bounds checking. So that's all fun and games. Next are the left and right symbols, which move the cursor, well, left and right. These ones I do need to bounce check though. Since the memory size is variable, you can change that in, depending on what board you're compiling for, what you how, how much RAM you have and all that. I can't always guarantee that the index will always fit. So bounce checking is, here is absolutely necessary. Whatever, simple enough. Now comes the real fun ones. And in case you weren't aware, programming languages basically need conditionals for them to be useful. If you can't check for equality, you might as well not be writing code at all. And it would also be cool to do things repeatedly. Like if I want to do something four times, it would be pretty nice if I could just have it do it four times instead of having to write them separate time. Well, BrainFuck combines these. It's these buddy boys right here, the square brackets. And all they do is loop what's inside of them until the memory of the cursor reaches zero. So as long as what it's looking at is not zero, it'll keep just repeating. Now that might sound like an easy thing to implement, but that is until you realize you can put them inside of each other. So to handle this, we need to use a stack. stack. stack, 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 stack. No, not that stack. Not that stack either. Come there's a bunch of explanations out there that go into detail what exactly a stack is in computer science, but all you need to know here is that I need one. And well, um, the Arduino doesn't have one built in. Luckily, all us CS majors are forced to learn how to implement it. And um, so I know, I know how to do that. Yay. And last but not least, we have the IO functions, comma and period. Now normally, period is supposed to write the ASCII character, that's this big table right here, of the memory value and the cursor. I don't have a, I don't have a console. It, like it's supposed to write to the console. It, I don't have one to write to. But you know what I do have is a serial port. So, I mean, instead I just write it to the serial port. Makes sense, well, sometimes. All right, so I just did something stupid here. Uh, I'm was I was trying to print out this character right here, a nice little slash. So I was kind of doing this like you know this is hexadecimal, so like sixteen thirty two forty eight. Perfect. I'll just put in forty eight pluses, and uh, well I did that, and it gave me uh, it gave me a zero. So I'm like, well why is it giving me a zero? Well it turns out actually forty eight is this one up here, and that's a string for zero. I'd... <laughs> No, I could have done the same thing for comma, just, you know, read from the serial to take input. But remember, we're on an Arduino, and what's a better way to take input than through the analog pins? So I, I took a bit of a unique approach here, and since the value at the cursor is going to be overwritten anyways, I figure, why not just read from the analog pins based on what the value of the cursor is? So like, 
For example, if the value is currently zero, it'll read from A0. And if it's at 154, it'll read from A3. Well, you can figure that one out. And finally, after working out all the kinks and stuff like that, I got all of the instructions implemented. It was time to try out my interpreter with a real program. All right, moment of truth. Hello world in there and uh, yeah. And of course, what is an Arduino without a circuit to test it with? So this is my quote unquote finished board design. Um, it's got eight of the LEDs out of the possible, what is that, 13 minus two, so 11 LEDs. I'm just too lazy to hook up the other ones, truth be told. Each of these LEDs will light up depending on the threshold that I've set. In my code here, you can kind of see it. Uh, digital threshold is set to one. So uh, it will light up whenever the respective uh, memory cell is greater than, greater than one. So I can show that to you. So if I just like enter in the program plus, 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 uh, that's, that's five. So I believe that is greater than one. So if we hit enter, you see that lights up. And then I can shift it over a couple times and then do the same thing there. Let's say I wanted to make it three. Okay, so it's three. Uh, that's two, three. And wow, look at that. It's, it's lit up. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the finished design. So now I guess it's possible to control an Arduino with brainfuck code. I mean, if you, if that's sort of your thing. If you want to give this a shot, I'll put the source code down in the description. You can tinker around with it, see how it works, and, well, yeah. Um, have fun with that. Now, normally, period is supports... Now, normally, period is supports... Supports... Gosh darn it.